So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable unto you, O Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. So have you all ever wondered why we read the scriptures we do on Sunday morning? Why did we read from Jonah and Psalm 62 and 1 Corinthians and Mark this morning? Are we going to pick it up next week? Do we continue on with Jonah? What's going to happen? Is there a method to this madness? Or is it just preacher's choice? Alas, it is not preacher's choice. Otherwise, you all would end up with a lot more preaching series on dad jokes. Did you know the book of Genesis is full of baseball verses? Just look how it starts in the big inning. (laughs) Be thankful it is not preacher's choice. No, we... We follow something called the Revised Common Lectionary. And this ancient practice goes back to 1992. Right? So this is a relatively new thing. The Revised Common Lectionary that we have dates back to 1992 when all of the mainline denominations, your Roman Catholics, your Presbyterians, Methodists, Lutherans, Episcopalians, Disciples of Christ, we all got together and said, wouldn't it be fun if we read the same thing every Sunday in every church? All right? And it's a beautiful idea that no matter where you go in the world, if you popped into a Roman Catholic church this morning, you would hear these scriptures. If you're at a Methodist church in uh, Timbuktu, yep, you'd hear it there too. If you were at a Lutheran church in uh, Sheboygan, you would hear these scriptures, right? So no matter where you go, those that participate in the Revised Common Lectionary, you hear these scriptures. And it's a beautiful act of ecumenism, something I'm proud that we're we're a part of. Side note, ecumenism versus interfaith, right? Ecumenism, ecumenical gatherings, amongst the church, different denominations. Interfaith is amongst different religions. You know, so if we have interfaith gatherings, that's Buddhists, Muslims, uh, and and Christians coming together, right? If it's ecumenical, it's Baptists and Roman Catholics and Episcopalians coming together. All right, so with that out there, we have all these representatives from the mainline denominations. They come together and they agree on the basics around Scripture. Those basics being... Uh, God inspired the Holy Scriptures. A perfect God inspired the Holy Scriptures. They were written and, and assembled and translated by imperfect humans. And they are best read together in community along with the Holy Spirit. We agreed that there were at least 66 books of the Bible that were inspired. 39 in the Old Testament... 27 in the New Testament, Roman Catholics were like, oh, we got 14 more. And the Lutherans were like, no, we don't. Right? So the, the 14 more are the books of the Apocrypha, you know, Tobit, First and Second Maccabees, the like, right? And we Episcopalians were like, ah, we're going to walk the middle road. We say that a lot, right? So we don't believe the Apocrypha is the inspired word of God. We do believe that reading them is good for us as Christians. And so every once in a while in the Revised Common Lectionary, we'll take the apocryphal option. You'll hear us do a reading from Tobit or the Wisdom of Sirach. And those of you coming from the Baptist Church, you'll be like, what? They are not inspired, but they are good for us to read and to hear together. So we agree on these baseline of, of Scripture. And the representatives came together and said, hey, let's do a three-year rotation according to the synoptic gospels, according to the pattern laid out by the divine liturgy. So the divine liturgy is actually an ancient practice going back to the 5th century. So the 400s, you know, this pattern of 
Old Testament psalm, New Testament gospel comes into being. Right? And the idea behind it is that we read the Old Testament because it connects us to our Jewish faith. Right? Jesus was a Jew. We stay connected to the, to the tree that we have been grafted into. So we read Old Testament. We read the psalm because it gives voice to uh, our humanness, our hopes, our fears, our emotions. We get the psalms as this human response. We read the New Testament because it speaks into our life as a Christian community. Most of the time, it's one of the letters from Paul or Peter, James, or the book of Acts, right? So we learn something about living together as a Christian community. And then lastly, we round things out with the gospel. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the centerpiece of the lectionary. With Christ as the anchor of our faith, the gospels are the anchor of the lectionary. And so we have this three-year cycle based on the synoptics. So, you know, uh, Acacia was great explaining where sin optics come from, right? So it's from a, uh, the same point of view. Matthew, Mark, and Luke, you know, they track along pretty well. John... John, I, I learned a new term this morning. John is the maverick gospel. Oh, I like that. Now I like the gospel of John even more. Right? So we have the synoptic gospels that set the tone for our lectionary, our readings throughout the year. Year A is Matthew. Right? We read the whole gospel of Matthew uh, in year A, which happened to be last year. This year, year B, we read all of Mark. Next year... We will read all of Luke. And those of you who are like, oh man, what happened to the Maverick Gospel, right? John gets his. Right? We get John every year. We get a lot of John this year because Mark is so much shorter than the rest of them. And John gets the, the privilege of uh, being the Gospel reading for a lot of our high holy days. Pay attention in Easter, almost all of Holy Week leading up to Easter comes from the Gospel of John. So we've got all of these uh, gospel readings setting the three-year cycle. And then the Revised Common Lectionary representative said, okay, let's take Old Testament psalm and New Testament readings and match them up with the gospel reading of the day. Sometimes this patterning is really obvious. After Easter, we have what we call Good Shepherd Sunday. It's not an official church holiday it's just about every reading about sheep that we can get into one service All right we get the gospel of john i am the good shepherd we'll read the 23rd psalm we'll sing the 23rd psalm right and we see the connection on how all the different scriptures line up with this good shepherd theme there will come times in the summer where we'll look at the readings and we'll be like i have no idea how these are connected right? it's not always obvious but the intention is that each of the readings builds towards a theme in the gospel. Take this morning, for instance. Right? The theme in the gospel we had was the calling of the disciples. And we see how the other readings lead up to the call of the disciples. We start with Jonah, which is like the lowest common denominator for answering a call. It is a really low bar with Jonah, right? He is one of the most reluctant prophets ever. His capstone event we hear today. He wanders a third of the way into the city, says eight words, turns around and walks out, and that's it. It's like, I'm done. And yet, and yet, this whole metropolis repents and turns back to God. Our psalm, Psalm 62, picks up on this idea that answering a call is not so much about completing a task, as it is about letting God work through you. 1 Corinthians takes that thread a little bit farther. It says when you let God work through you, it's not just a change of vocation. It's a change in how you relate to the world. Moving from my will be done to thy will be done. And so we get all of this preparatory material for when we get to the gospel reading today, we have a fuller context of what's going on. God, in the person of Jesus Christ, is calling these imperfect fishermen to 
to, to come alongside him and share the good news of the gospel, right? And their response, right? Their response in answering the call is less about their wisdom or their skill and more about their ability to follow wherever the Father, the Son, or the Holy Spirit leads them. So that's how we decide what scriptures we're going to read every Sunday. Now, you might take pity on your preacher. You might say, oh, you poor folks, you never get to choose the scriptures you're going to preach on. Maybe you don't say that. I say that. There are many Sundays where I'm like, oh, I wish I could do this or I could do that. But in all honesty, y'all, what we give up in control, we gain in grace. I think that's so true about so many things in our lives. What we give up in control, we gain in grace. More often than not, the scriptures appointed for the day are precisely the scriptures we need to hear. This morning, no different. We get these wonderful readings about callings, all right? And it just happens to be the Sunday before the deadline for vestry applications. Eh? So maybe you've been thinking about running for the vestry and you're like, oh, I'm not worthy or I'm not equipped or I don't have the right skill set. And then you hear these scriptures this morning and you recognize that the, the traits that matter in prophets and the disciples and the apostles are traits that are about perseverance and about faithfulness. Perseverance to keep going back to God, to keep engaging in a relationship with the Holy Spirit, to get uh, a connection and then go and try things. Maybe try things and fail and to learn from them. Maybe try things and succeed and build momentum. But the, our ability to keep coming back to God, to renew that relationship over and over again, that perseverance matters. And faithfulness, the ability to keep saying, okay, I'll follow down this road, this path. I'll go where you lead. Perseverance and faithfulness. And so maybe you are called to run for vestry. I want to leave you with one final thought. Uh, my youth confirmation folks already know the answer to this, but do any of you know what time of day God created Adam? Morning, good guess, Mal. Dawn, good guess. Uh, you know, most Easter things come around morning. It was late afternoon. How do we know? Because it was right before Eve. So thanks be to God for the Holy Scriptures. And thanks be to God we do follow the Revised Common Lectionary. Amen. <laughs>